Hey guys, hi. <laughs> I see you guys. Okay, I actually have a title to this show. It's called um, Fear is Not Real. <laughs> so Carolina will be writing that down in her little booth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like I kept hearing um, Will Smith um, in that movie when he says, um, fear is not real. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination, causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist. This is near insanity. Fear is a choice. So I got really fired up about that because these last lessons, um, yeah, I've always been in love with the text of A Course in Miracles. It just kind of calmed me and it made sense um, in contrast to the religion I was raised with, Catholicism. And the lessons, you know, I, I, had, to, I had to learn to be attracted to um, the metaphysics. And I mean, it's so exciting. But anyway, this time, this time, this year with the lessons, the, the lessons are not leaving my mind all day. I don't even have to try. It's just time. And when it's time, it's time. So I, um, I just had these lessons, these past few lessons in my mind. My meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. I'm upset because I see a meaningless world. And a meaningless world engenders fear. And so I just feel like um, the show for me has been the opportunity to really teach what I would learn, to just talk about what's happening in my mind. And it's pretty cool because uh, I think it was yesterday I had a, like a feeling of chaos in my mind, but I, I had an expectation that I would be very, very excited because it seems like the last part of the school fell away from me. Um, the last thing I was doing was showing up for expression sessions. And then I went to get my plate and I heard Emily was in there with them. And I was like, oh, it's not, I guess it's been handed over, that part. And so I went back into my room and I was like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> it's too soon to start packing because I don't leave for like eight or nine days for my tour. So I was just sat there and I was, um, I was uncomfortable. What do I do with myself? And I, I didn't go, um, I didn't go try to write a song. I didn't go for a walk. I didn't go out to dinner later that night. I didn't distract. I just, because I was trying to find what to do and I just had to be with it and let it be given. You know, I feel like there's always this in between when we, when we're ready to go to the next level of our healing or our new assignments or letting go of the past, there's always a period of discomfort no matter what it is or it's seemingly. I mean, for me, I usually just get really excited about change, um, most change. But um, I don't know, I felt uncomfortable and just, yeah, pissy yesterday. And so I just was with it and um, I didn't like it. But then by the end of the day, I had a tour call and then Emily thought of this movie to watch with the house. and. Like I was just whipped out of it. Like I just waited instead of trying to make things happen. I asked Jesus, I said, what would you have me do? And nothing came in. So I didn't have, I had to go with that. You know, just, I had to, it wasn't going to be the ego. Oh, I'll go out to a movie or I'll go out, I'll go shopping or, you know, whatever. I didn't do that. And so I'm grateful. I mean, we just have to accept sometimes if we're asking and praying. So I just feel like this has like kind of three parts to it. Um, fear is not real is what I really want to discuss, except that last weekend's retreat about the guidance is, is still very, very prevalent in my mind. It's so important because if we ask for guidance, that is going to take us out of the fear. And then I have this, this, this feeling of judge not because, you know, yeah, just, just bear with me. So I'll just read a few things. I've been listening to David's lesson every day. Um, you know, with commentary and with the text, it's really helpful to take a part of the text 
and then um, the lesson, do the exercise, and then sometimes David's commentary just opens up my mind so much more than what I would hear in just the words of the course. I'm just so grateful for, for the opportunity to see what needs to be seen. So, all right, so some of the things Jesus said in these last lessons in the text and, and in the lesson was that my control can take over everything that does not matter while my guidance can take over everything that does. Guidance, once again, if you so choose. Fear can be self-controlled. The presence of fear shows that you have raised body thoughts to the level of mind. So there's three parts to what I want to discuss. Raising, this is what Jesus says, raising body thoughts to the level of mind causes fear. Also, when you are feeling separate, that is always the cause of fear. And also that he gives us some st simple steps the way out of fear, which is surprisingly love. So, I mean, it's just all like truth is streaming, like you hear it when you hear it. But this is really exciting to me because I, I can see that it never needs to be there. Fear needs not be. And you guys know I had this glimpse. I had the glimpse 20 years ago where I had no thoughts in my mind at all for a week. And I was literally the presence of God. But I didn't do that. Okay, that was a glimpse given to me. And now Spirit is saying, take these steps. So you will see the power of your mind, the power of your choosing. I can't just give it to you. I gave you the glimpse. Now let's take the steps so that you can know your own power. So, so the first thing I wanted to talk about was um, the presence of fear shows that you have raised body thoughts at the level of mind. So, you know, I've had a lot to heal. I've talked about it with like body things, looks and stuff like that. I was raised in a family where I thought that that was, you know, I had to unlearn that that, mat that doesn't matter. And so, you know, when you are in, in a relationship, your body is more, you're in your awareness, you know. And so in these last uh, six months, I've been in this womb, in this room, not in a relationship. And I just, there was such a lightness in my mind about my body. I wasn't aware of it anymore. I wasn't looking at it. You know, I wasn't, I, I, I really didn't leave La Casa much. So the only times I even thought about my hair and looking good was if I had to come and do the show. So it was very freeing for me these six months. And like, you know, Emily was saying, you don't even worry about, you don't even, um, you don't ever gain weight. And I said, I would, I would always fluctuate, but I haven't thought about it anymore. And it just doesn't change. There's no body thoughts. So my body has actually been the most ideal size. There's no clothes that don't fit anymore. And there's no thoughts. So this is how my experience is. Wow, I haven't had my body in awareness and it hasn't been in my mind. And you can go even much more deeper when you have thoughts of sickness and fearing death. And um, I always had thoughts that I was going to die when I was a kid. So these thoughts came back up to be looked at. And I noticed that those, were, those feelings of fear of dying and sickness weren't in my mind. Now I leave in almost a week, about a week. And so when I, about a week ago, I started thinking about what I could do because I was going to be in a relationship again. You all know I'm engaged and I haven't even had a date. So body thoughts are back in my mind. And I'm thinking this whole past week, I started to feel so uneasy and uncomfortable and unhappy. I was trying to eat certain things and control my, you know, just like, oh, I got to get my skin right and my hair right and my body and what, literally misery. I wouldn't have ever really seen it had it not been such a contrast experience of not having the body in the awareness. And then I started to think about like organs collapsing, you know, eating these healthy foods and my, and remembering fears about what I did to my body when I was a wild child. And I started to think, ah, oh, what have I done to my liver, my kidneys, oh, my lungs and smoking all, I'm telling you, the whole death thing came back into my awareness because I was trying to see if I could look, you know, make sure I looked good if I was gonna be naked again in front of someone, right? <laughs> I hate to say it, but that's what, that's what brought this all on. It's, it feels very deep. It's because it feels extremely simple. Literally, if we do, like I told you, in that glimpse, I had 
No thoughts in my mind. The minute my looks came back into my mind, I was in this deep depression all of a sudden. It took me all the way to death and organs failing. Okay, I'm a very healthy person. I, you know, I've lived in a spiritual community for seven years. And there's, no, there's no distractions. So that's one thing. I'm very excited about this because now I, we know what not to do, you know? How to stay in the presence, body thoughts, that was one. Okay, so I just want to continue reading here. Why do we condone insane thinking? Thinking. <laughs> we are only responsible for what we think. What you do comes from what you think. So I started thinking about my body being seen again, and I started acting like a crazy child. Eating different things, worrying, all kinds of things. Um, so he says, what you do comes from, from what you think. Place what you think under my guidance, which is what I did. That glimpse was, was what that glimpse gave me. Whenever you are in fear, it is a sure sign that you have allowed your mind to miscreate, meaning allowed your mind to go astray and have not allowed me to guide it. When you are fearful, you have chosen wrongly. That is why you feel responsible for it. You must change your mind and not your behavior. Now this is a matter of willingness. You do not need guidance except at the mind level where change is possible. So we're giving our minds over to spirit. We don't have to go there. We do not have to go to those thoughts. We do think we need to work these thoughts out in our mind. We're thinkers. We want to figure it out, and yet it's the complete opposite. You don't have to go there. So freeing. So he says you should ask for help in how these, these conditions came about, the fear. Okay, so one, he said we were raising body thoughts to the level of the mind. And now he's going to say the separation. He says before you choose to do anything, ask if your choice is, accordance, is in accordance with mine. That is guidance, guys. So the way out of fear is to take these steps and to remember to stop and ask for guidance. Okay. You can read this. This is what I was thinking like. You can read the book back and forth. You can join with your mighty companions. You can express until you're blue in the face. But if you don't stop and ask for guidance, then it's not going to change anything because you're going to be deciding with the ego. You're always deciding with the ego or the spirit. So you can, you can read this book, you can do all these things, but if you don't stop and pray all the time in everything, is your will in accordance with his, okay? So maybe you're doing that, but there's resistance. Maybe you just want, you think you want your own will. So fear is always a sign of strain. It arises when what you want conflicts with what you do. When there is fear, it is because you have not made up your mind. Your mind is then split and your behavior becomes erratic. It takes a decision to only do God's will. An undivided decision to bring the mind under the spirit's guidance without conscious effort is possible. But you must develop a willingness that most do not have yet. The strength to do this comes from your undivided decision. There is no strain in doing God's will as soon as you realize that it is your own. So that's the battle in thinking that there's a sacrifice in doing God's will. And yet every time we do our own will, we're, we're so miserable. So it's just a practice of saying, okay, I surrender. I think I want to go here or do this, but I really know from past experience, from the contrast experience, that only your will will make me happy. And the sooner we get on board on that train, the more we're going to see and be convinced that only his will makes us happy. And it makes us so happy. So it's very exciting stuff. So I, I'm really excited just because of all these thoughts together in my mind are making some kind of clarity for me today. Like there's no reason to ever think a separate thought again. That's, that's my feeling right now. So, 
Okay, it's a very simple lesson, Jesus says. He says, only your mind can produce fear and does so when you're wanting and doing or discordant. This can be corrected only by accepting a unified goal, healing, forgiveness, atonement, awakening. The first step, he says, they're very practical. I love this. Th these are practical steps about love. You gotta love this. First, know that this is fear. It's fear. There's only two things. If you're not in love, it's fear. There's only fear and love. It's the whole course. Number two, fear arises from lack of love. Number three, the only remedy for lack of love is perfect love. And number four, perfect love is the atonement. So how have we thought about the atonement in the past? There's many ways to think about it. It's like, okay, seeing the false is false. The past never happened. Forgiveness. Um, this is a dream. This is not real. It can't hurt me. I'm the son of God. But perfect love? Perfect love is the atonement? Okay. When I thought of this, I'm like, okay, Jesus is going to give me some practical steps. Oh, my God. It's like the rules for decision. I have to think really hard and like get really clear. And, but it's so simple. Love. Love. So that's when I heard, saw in my mind, oh my God, we have a choice. We have a choice that we just noticed that we saw a thought of separation. We felt excluded or unloved or unwanted or lonely or left out or, or a memory of a childhood pain or whatever it is. Oh my God, but, but we can just see that we're thinking that and see that we have a belief and decide I'm not separate from God. Give our mind back to Jesus who said that under his guidance, we're completely healed. So there, there it is, you guys, we don't have to work it out. And I just have to say, it just hit me like, my God, these steps. It's what we've heard our whole life. It's love is the answer to everything. Love is all you need. All you need is love. Only love is real. Love heals all things. Love is who we are. There is only love. <laughs> it's the answer every time. Don't try to work it out. You're feeling separate. Give your mind back to Jesus and say, please guide me out of it. We're back to guidance because only Jesus knows very, very specifically how to guide you out of fear. I was watching this movie on Netflix the other, like yesterday, in my like, what do I do? Can I get out of my room? What can I do to have fun? No, you're going to stay with me. So I was guided to just start this episode, and it was really weird. I think it was called The Affair. It was called The Affair, and it, it was so surreal. Like, I knew I couldn't get into all the episodes. I would never have time for that, but I watched what, the first one and maybe the half of the second one, and these, these people were both married, and they had an affair, and they would say, scene one. Allison, or part one, Allison, and then half the show is Allison, and they say part two, Noah. I couldn't believe it. They showed what the perception of the affair was from Noah's point of view, and then they acted out a whole different show. It was the same thing that happened, like a child choked, or their first kiss, or how they flirted. But it's, from Allison's view, it was a completely different story. Like the first story, he was totally, it was, from his view, she was totally coming on to him. She was this hot thing that he could have never um, you know, not been attracted to and wanted. And then when they showed her perception, it was completely opposite. He was coming on to her. She was innocent. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, whoa, what a trip. Because, you know, they didn't really tell you what they were doing at first. You just started watching this movie and you're like, oh my God, which one of it's true? Which one of it really happened? And then you're like, oh my God, none of it happened. It's all our perception. Such a trip. I mean, my mind kind of went into trash watching it. I'm so used to watching like Brother, Son, Sister, Moon, but I was like, oh no, spirit can use everything. I'm supposed to be watching this because I can see that none of it's real. It's pretty cool. So let's see where I left off. Yeah, I just, I just got really excited that there's practical steps to come out of fear by remembering that there's only love. And that's what the mystics are talking about, you know? The presence of love heals all things. Stop working it out in your mind. 
you have a holy mind. You have the mind of God. Do you think God would be thinking any of these thoughts that you're thinking? You were made in his likeness. So really, it's always an identity problem. It's, it's love or fear, or if you're identifying with a body or your true self, which cannot think its way out of anything. It's, it's pretty cool. I'm like really excited about this. Let's see what else I wrote down. Um, you need only to accept the need for the remedy. You have to recognize that you need help. The need for the re remedy, perfect love, atonement, none of this is real that you're thinking, none of it matters. This is how true healing occurs, Jesus said. You need to accept the need for the remedy, not just the remedy, but that you need it. <sighs> we all experience fear, but you must it says, why does it occur? You must realize the power of the mind. It never sleeps. It's always creating. So as these thoughts are happening, you're making this world that you see, this nightmare. It's pretty cool. I love this um, sentence. It says, I'll just read it so I can quote it right, because it says, thought and belief combine into a power surge that can literally move mountains. Your mind can you believe that your mind can move the form of mountains? But when you're aligning with the thoughts of working it out or being unloved or feeling separate or being ugly or not fitting in your clothes, like you're creating this world of, you know, starvation and hunger and abandonment and rejection. And then you give your mind to God and let go of these thoughts or watch them and just notice them. Give your mind back to God, and we're going to have a power surge that can move mountains, which I did experience in my glimpse. I mean, the whole world was just, like, attracted to my presence, and I was just above the whole battleground for a week. It's very profound when you actually witness the power of your own mind and get to see the contrast of what happens when you're not aligned with spirit, when you identify with the body, and when, when you're aligned with spirit to watch long enough to watch the whole world change in front of you, every person. There's this quote in the Course that says, you know, like the, wind, the trees and the leaves will bend to shade you and like everything kind of just falls at your feet. It, it's so attracted to that presence. The form just collapses into only love. <sighs> so I, a couple of my mighties, I just glanced through Facebook for a minute yesterday, and, and this was the only thing that stood out. I think it was Susanna that posted it. And I got judge not because it's your, I got judge not out of it because it's your judgment that engenders fear. It's your judgment that starts this whole swirl of fear. And it's a quote from one of the lessons that I was just saying. It says, if you could accept the world as meaningless and let the truth be written upon it for you, it would make you indescribably happy. But because it is meaningless, you are impelled to write upon it what you would have it be. It is this that you see in it. It is this that is meaningless in truth. Beneath your words is written the word of God. The truth upsets you now, but when your words have been erased, you will see his. That is the ultimate purpose of these exercises. So this, what I've just read to you, is a prayer for recognizing that everything is neutral. This is my meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. And that I can let go of any personal interpretations and be open to what he would have me see instead. So, and all that is is a practice of not judging when you look at something, like just catching yourself, like, oh, I see that I think I know what I see. 
and I'm interpreting it. And just look at it in wonderment, hand that perception over to spirit and just say, okay, now you tell me what this is. Because your interpretation is making you afraid. It's making you so fearful. So why would you even want it? It's not true. That's what we're learning. So um, is it, do I, can I open it for, does anyone have anything to share? I do have five minutes. If anybody has anything to share, that was what I was going to do today, but then I had something to heal. So I brought, I mean, I have the truth sawing through my mind and I want to keep it. I, if I see a hand come up, I'll stop talking. But five minutes isn't much time, but I just spent my whole life in fear. And I remember recently telling my dad, he's like, are you, sh you're not, this is not a, this is not a phase. Like, again, like they thought I was going through a phase when I came out as gay. And now they're like, now you, they, you know, you're in a cult and it's just a phase, right? They're like, it's not a phase. Why? Why? I said, well, it's, I said, I just lived my whole life in fear. And I'm learning that there's only two emotions, love and fear. And I'm learning that I don't have to be in that fear. And my dad was like, wow, I never knew you were in so much fear. And I was like, well, isn't everyone? <sighs> but my dad, my dad drinks from the time he wakes up to the time he goes to bed. So I guess we all have our way. I'm not judging anymore. I just accept him for who he is. But I know I can't t call him after three or he won't remember what I've said. So, you know, it's like we all have our distractions so that we won't. Hand up. Oh, a hand up. Okay. Bernie. Oh, his hand went down. Okay. Oh, his hand's up again. Okay. <laughs> Let's have Bernie. Hey, I can't hear you yet. Can you know? Hi, I can hear you. Okay. Do you want to share something? Do you know, can you hear me, Bern? Yes, I can hear you. Did you want to share something? Mm. Oh. Mm. Do you have some fear right now? I think so, yes. Yeah. I'm hoping Jesus will just dissolve it in our silence. Because where two or more are gathered, he's just makes it that much more powerful.
Did you think of a question or did you just want to? Uh, I think I just wanted to be seen. That's beautiful. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, I see you. <laughs> I'm really grateful that you just even... This is a step, guys. I mean, really, it's a huge step. Sometimes there's just such a fear of being seen and even putting yourself out there. So I feel like I feel you. Is it Bernie? Is that your name? Yes. Bernie. Well, thank you for, so thank you. what's that? Thank you. Thank you for um, letting us have you in our mind, your beautiful face and your presence. And we're just with you and whatever's happening. But yeah, anytime anyone wants to just say hi or just be with, be with us like this, I feel, I feel the power of it. So thank you. Thank you. I love being around people like you because like I can't stop talking. <laughs> and then there's these these ones who come and they just they're just presence. And I always get paired up with those ones. So, I'm grateful. Okay, well I'll see you guys um next week for my last show before I go out on tour for like 6 months. So, I'll see you guys next week on Humbled. Love you.